And now, Late Night Boxing Talk with your host, Jay Cotto. What's up, fight fans? I'm Jay Cotto, and welcome to Late Night Boxing Talk. What's going on, fight fans? I hope everybody is surviving the week. And I hope that everybody's preparing for the weekend. And just basically, man, it's it's uh, just great. Isn't it, guys? To just kind of come to the, you know, pre-weekend, you know what I mean? It feels awesome, man. And um, I hope you guys have a blast this weekend, you know, and you guys just uh, enjoy the fights. Now, I've got some late night boxing talk for y'all. And, uh, you know, it's pretty lengthy. Just want to thank all the uh, the fight fans and uh, all the subscribers that have been uh, following me, especially on other social media platforms. I'm trying to get those guys to get over here on YouTube, you know what I mean? Um, peace to the YouTube boxing community, you know what I mean? And, uh... Everyone else who's uh, keeping it boxing, you know, uh, I've been listening to a lot of a lot of uh, videos that have been going around and uh, I've been watching them as well. And I have to tell you, man, you know, um, there are a lot of subjects, a lot of subjects and they're interesting. They're very interesting. They're very interesting. I just hope that uh, everybody who's going to rebut will do it respectfully and it just turns into a conversation and agree to disagree. Let's not even make it a quarrel. But anyway, let's get it on with the late night boxing talk. Let's get it. Okay. It's going to be the first piece of news on late night boxing talk we're going to be talking about and um well Andrew Garcia says that Danny Garcia will be known as the greatest Puerto Rican fighter okay what do you guys think of that fucking statement now since I am the creator Of this video, I'm going to tell you how I feel. This is bullshit. This this is something that I expect a father who is proud of his son to say. I I don't I I don't condone the behavior, but this what he said I can I can understand. You know what I mean? I don't have to like it, but. He is his father, so I'll respect it. But at the same time, now, here's my opinion on it. I have a right to it. This is bullshit. The greatest Puerto Rican fighter ever? No way. That's no, 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 man. No. No. Benitez, Camacho. There's there's no way. No, no, there's no way. And especially, there are, certain, there are some blasphemous things that he has said as well. Um, We'll get to the second part of that later on in this program. But, um, you know... Let me know in the comment section, guys. What do you think about that? About that statement? You know what I mean? And don't make it about me because I already let you guys know exactly what I felt about it. But uh, moving on. Now, this is the first piece of news and the first little chat, you know, we're going to have on Canelo and uh, Chavez Jr. Now, some are actually saying that Canelo and Chavez Jr., okay, is, I repeat, is the biggest fight in boxing history okay i disagree with that i totally disagree with that the, the, the biggest fight in boxing history come on no way no way and well canelo alvarez and julio cesar chavez jr if you didn't know are reported to have a bet and 
The bet is this. The winner takes from all the winnings. Yeah. Yeah. The winner takes home all of the fucking winnings. This shit is crazy, isn't it? Isn't it? I have something to say about that as well. Later on. In our beloved late night boxing talk session. But, uh, <clears throat> ja- uh, Baru Jack, okay? TMT's Baru Jack tweeted a photo of himself and Adonis Stevenson. Both holding a WBC strap as Jack is the super middleweight champion. And Adonis Stevenson's is the light heavyweight champion holding the WBC. Now, is this real or is this just speculation? We all know that they're in a different weight class. But is this speculation? Is this speculation? Is, is this something that, you know what I mean? That Baru Jack wants and just tweeted that. And just put it in there. A little ripple in the pond. You know what I mean? That'll be fucking crazy, man. Excuse me, Lord, for cursing. But moving on. Well, boxing news, man, for matches that are that are uh, anticipated. Because 2017 is going to be pff, fireworks, I'm telling you, within the sport of boxing. Now, Luke Campbell and uh, Jer- uh, Jairo Lopez faced off. As well as Ga- uh, Gavin McDonald. Okay, and Ray Vargas faced off. And, uh, well, them fights are coming very soon. And it's going to be great. They're going to be pretty good fights. These are guys coming up. And uh, let's let's give them some light as well over there in the UK. Peace to the UK followers of UK Boxing Heads. Hashtag come back to boxing. Now, Anthony Joshua, IBF heavyweight champion, says that Deontay Wilder, WBC title holder, has to step his level of competition up. He also says that his resume is mediocre. Now, Dems is fighting words. <laughs> I, I I can't wait to these guys. If if Deontay Wilder doesn't doesn't lose or drop the ball to uh, Gerald Washington, you know, and if he does lose, I'm not gonna you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna railroad the guy. I mean, he is coming back from surgery and he's not going to be able to use his money hand as much Let, let's see what he picked up in training you know what i mean um but uh yeah you know he says that uh his resume is mediocre that is fucking nuts and now we're from our sponsor Get Paulie Malignaggi's Paulie the Yak The Children Book Written by Paulie Malignaggi Hear the story of little old Paulie Go on and on about nothing Especially the things he stood for Paulie the Yak Written by Paulie Malignaggi Get it at your local bookstore Barnes and Nobles Amazon.com Or Lulu.com And now, back to Late Night Boxing Talk with your host, Jay Cotto. What up, what up, guys? All right. So, now, you know, Manny Pacquiao has actually confirmed the fight with Amir Khan. Okay? That's that's that certification. I, I I and I'm only speaking for myself. I stated that I wasn't going to believe this fight was going to happen until either Bob Arum, Manny Pacquiao, you know, and you know, or end type situation. Um, if any of those two were to actually confirm it, and they did, and hey, let's get it. So, uh. Shady Slim, may the best man win. Now, the pro debut of uh, 
Harley Ben. Okay, that's the son of Nigel Ben. And if you guys don't know about Nigel Ben, YouTube him. Great fighter from England. Go check it out. And uh, you guys have to understand, man. Um, you know, this is another, you know, second generation fighter come, you know, coming to represent his father. And, you know, it's great. It's great for these young men to be stepping up. But you guys got to check them out. Definitely the debut of Harley Ben. I will be coming. Uh, I think it's happening this Saturday. Now, Joseph Parker and Huey Fury, their match has run into some problems, okay? It, it seems Fury hasn't signed the contract for the WBO strap match, okay? He hasn't signed yet. Now, the first bid was $3 million, And, uh, well, you know, uh, it was won, of course, by uh, Joseph Parker's side. But Frank Warren had uh, put $1.8 million up. Now, it's reported for you guys that are, uh, how do we say, you know, uh, financial managers of your fighters, you know. Um, <laughs> well, it's reported that Parker will get $1.8 million and Fury, if he decides to sign his name on the dotted line, would get a reported $1.2 million. Now, why has a Fury signed? Now, he has till tomorrow, UK time, 12 p.m. Okay, these guys are both undefeated. You know, and that that's 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 great for business, man. I just don't understand why these guys, you know, well, not guys. I, I can't, you know, I just don't understand why Fury hasn't signed. That's a lot of money. That's good money. That's money that a lot of fighters don't see. You know what I mean? That's a lot. We're moving along. Now, Roman Gonzalez, Chocolito, okay? The champ will be going up against Sri Saket Rang Visai, all right? Now, this is just me talking to you about the 30-day weigh-in results. And, uh, well, it's supposed to be, well, you know, this was 30 days. So, into you know, going into, you know. So, it's for the uh, super flyweight. Right, and it's one it has to be one hundred and fifteen pounds. That's the that, that's the that's the weight limit, the deadline, right? So, Roman Chacarito Gonzalez after thirty days is weighing one twenty two point six, and Rang Visay is weighing one hundred twenty five point nine. That's thirty day check in. Just letting the Roman Chocolito Gonzalez fans know, or if any fans of Rang Visay are interested. We're winning along. Now, second news on Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao and Jeff Horn, of course, they were supposed to fight for April 2017. But, of course, it's off. Now, it sucks for Australia big time. But at the same time, it's great for the sport, man. And it's great for Manny Pacquiao in so many ways because um, you know it's it's it, had he not had he taken the fight and would have played out it would have been terrible you know what I mean there have been so many negative and 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 it wouldn't have been a good fight Manny Pacquiao would have defeated this guy then he would have been accused of cherry picking but this must be an account of the Amir Khan fight that's going to happen. Now, that's, that's, I don't know, you know what I mean? That's something that I just feel is sort of cutthroat. Because Khan usually has a habit of doing, of doing that. So I feel kind of bad for Jeff Horn, but. Because it would have been a big opportunity. But like I said, it's it's good for the sport and it's good for Pacquiao in so many ways. You know what I mean? And that's it. But uh, Gavin McDowell and Ray Vargas had an official head-to-head -head today. And uh, their match is coming up shortly. Now, more news on the uh, 
you know, Manny Pacquiao and Khan fight. Now, Joe Goosen says in an interview about the Khan and Pacquiao fight, he says that Virgil Hill has done a great job keeping Khan in athletic shape. Also says a fight is different than sparring. He won't be easy for Manny, but he needs... A stunning win. Khan needs a stunning win. Now, I have to say this now. Because Khan is taking this fight. All right, you wanted Manny Pacquiao, you got him. You did, You wasn't going to get Floyd. But you wanted, you, got, you wanted Manny Pacquiao's attention, you got it, right? So, now, your stock has fallen already, Khan. And for you Khan fans, you have to understand... Khan is not more hotter, you know, because he got knocked out. No. You know what I'm saying? His stock has fallen after that devastating NyQuil f- fucking fist that Canelo Alvarez had delivered. So now, Manny Pacquiao may not or may knock Amir Khan out. But if Amir Khan loses by decision, stoppage, or just straight knock, I mean, you know, sleeping like, uh, we can no longer look at Amir Khan as even a B-level fighter. And, And, you know, you guys who follow him like to put him as an elite fighter and there's a lot of disagreements with that, but it is what it is, guys. You know what I mean? I mean, you guys have rights to your opinion. And now we're from our sponsor. Dr. Schroll's Footliners, Louise Ortiz edition. Feet hurt from chasing cowards in the ring. Corns, bunions are flaring up. Get Dr. Schroll's Footliners, made with chase a bitch ass nigga technology. You're guaranteed to catch your opponent every time. Dr. Schroll's Footliners, Louise Ortiz edition. Get King Kong on a motherfucker. Available at Foot Locker. And now, back to late night boxing talk with your host, Jay Cotto. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, guys, yes. It's getting crazier and crazier and crazier as 2017 is trying to catch us up with some great boxing. And, you know, think, you know, you guys got to understand, like, you got to take in exactly what's going on in your era, you know, even even from 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 the smallest things, you know, that certain fighters or your fighters or anybody's fighters, you know, are are, are going, you know, through. But you guys got to take it all in, man. You guys got to take it all in. You know what I mean? But uh, let's get back. Now, Oscar De La Hoya says that uh, he wants to make the best fights happen but and the ball is in Golovkin's court okay and he also says that these fighters are always scared to lose now 15 million dollars is what they offered the undefeated undisputed unified middleweight champion of the world Gennady Gadaevich Golovkin some say Golovkin doesn't have a name, but pay-per-view sales and TV ratings as of late proves that claim very wrong. Now, that's a lot of hypocrisy in Oscar De La Hoya's statement. And remember, remember when he used to bitch about what he's doing with Canelo when Mayweather Jr., the prize fighter from Vegas, was doing it himself. Remember that shit, ladies and gentlemen? 
Remember that shit? Now, Canelo placing a bet with, with, with Chavez just exposes the fact that he could have settled for the Golovkin fight. Okay? The bet, the winner walks away with everything. So, why not reverse that whole dumb notion that's supposed to make Canelo look like a man and negotiate? Settle and break even with Canelo in order to give us our middleweight super fight. Because it's always going to be, as far as I'm concerned and other fight fans are concerned, Golovkin didn't do this. Canelo wants that. Let's have it. Let's have it as of now. The fight fans want the fucking fight. And I also bet if the fight would if the fight were to be made, Canelo would not bet the whole purse. Like he's doing with Chavez. He would not do that. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And more crazy stuff from Oscar De La Hoya. Okay? For me, Oscar De La Hoya is diminishing in character. He's he's bugging out. I mean, I'm a golden boy, you know, fight fan. I, I love the cars they put on. You know, some of the talent they have in stables, but this is crazy. Now, Oscar De La Hoya also says that Errol Spence Jr. is better than the prize fighter from Vegas, Mayweather Jr. He also says, we built Errol Spence, all those guys. I would build Spence Jr. into a Sugar Ray Leonard. I'd let him fight the best. That's bullshit. I also know he destroyed Brooke. I'd love to manage him. Imagine the Golden Boy and Spence Jr. Hashtag don't do it, Spence Jr. Now, this was off of an interview. I think it was ES News, if I'm not mistaken. And, you know, it, it, it gets to me. I mean, you know, like he's, you know, just like he he contradicted himself and made himself look stupid when I said earlier before about him and that bullshit with that bullshit with him just saying that fighters are scared to lose but then he doesn't push for a Canelo fight and stalls and makes the kid look crazy right because it also feels not also Canelo's fault man Canelo's just following Oscar because Oscar's a legend and blah 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 okay but now, now he's saying all this shit about Errol Spence Junior, he's jocking him now, and 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 he want, he would have made him to a sugary Leonard. The shit that got to me now with this, what he said is, I'd let him fight the best, which is bullshit. He probably he probably would handle his career the way he's handling Canelo Alvarez's career, and the way he tried to handle Luis King Kong Ortiz's career. Look where King Kong Ortiz is at now. Look at the repetition of Canelo Alvarez. Aware of fight fans that are not stuck in the matrix. Let me your eyes. Wake up. <laughs> you understand. Let's get it. Now, Jacobs, Daniel Jacobs, responds to fight fans and critics and critics who are fight fans. And he says... I have a mental and physical edge. I'm used to an old school style of training. Now I'm doing high tech stuff. This is my moment. The pinnacle. My hands will do the talking. It's all a mental battle. Golovkin hasn't fought anyone like me. And I see bits and pieces of flaws. Uh, he also says his resume is, is, is up for debate. Most were smaller than he was. The guys that he fought, of course. He has never fought anyone like me. Any advantage that I can have, mental, physical, I'll take it. He may be a bigger puncher, but I can still hurt him. I believe in myself. I was down against uh, Privog and Mora, so that doesn't affect me. 
people will say things. When you go against a big puncher, you're prepared. You kind of embrace it at the end of the day. He will be tested. Daniel Jacobs. Now, I've been saying this for a long time. You guys, those that don't believe me and think that I'm talking shit like other people do, uh, you can you can look into the uh, into my video archives. You know what I mean. And um, I, I've been saying that Daniel Jacobs has the tools to give Daddy uh, to give uh, Gennady Golovkin his first loss, man. You know what I mean? I really feel that way. I really, really do. It's crazy. And now, a word from our sponsor. Get Amiricon Suppository Plus. When you're full of shit, Con Suppository Plus will clear the way. And also try Amiricon's Intestinal Flush. Cleanse yourself from all the bullshit. Amiricon's Suppository Plus. Get it at your local GMC's Rite Aid or Walgreens. Late Night Boxing Talk has been brought to you by Angel Garcia's Verbal Super Glue. When you say shit, make sure it sticks. Verbal Super Glue. And Nacho Berestain's Nasal Asper Cream. When your nose is too big and your face starts dragging, use Nasal Asper Cream. Made with blowfish and scorpion venom, the pain will cease. Nasal asper cream. Side effects are runny nose, runny assholes, itchy nipples, burning sensation of the lips, and random shit droppings may occur if you drink water. Please consult your physicians before use. Late night boxing talk has also been brought to you by... Maidana Punch Made with real fruit juices And Adrian Broner's defeat This will definitely be your number one beverage Get it now Maidana Punch And Freud Mayweather Saline Plus Feel clean Cleanse and get the results That the best ever would ever get Freud Mayweather's Saline Plus Get it at your local GNC. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Yes, fight fans. So, before I close out, I just want to let you guys know that Lou DeBella hosted a live conference call. I took the time out and, you know, jotted down as much as I could for you guys. And it's, it was very interesting, man. It was very, 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 very interesting. And, um, well, all I can say is that it, it was it was an interesting conference call. Uh, you know, it didn't get too crazy. But at the same time, you could tell these two are focused. These two gentlemen are focused. I really, really like it. I'm happy that this is actually going to go down, man. I, I just can't wait. You know, um, I think February can hurry up and go. I mean, we can wake up tomorrow and if we all agree. We would all agree uh, that we would all march here tomorrow if we could, right? Fight fans, I mean, <laughs> it'll take a couple of days off our lives, but it is what it is. But uh, this is... This is a fight that I'm, I'm you know, I, I want to be proud of. I can't say it just yet. But this is what went down, all right? Now, Ludabella, 
he hosted a live conference call between WBA welterweight champion Keith Thurman and WBC title holder Danny Garcia. And, uh, well, before we get into anything, if you fight fans didn't know, this will be the third time in boxing history, all right, that, uh, you know, two undefeated champions fight to unify, okay, there's, there, there's straps, and the last to do were uh, De La Hoya and Trinidad. And, uh, well, this fight will actually determine who is the best in the welterweight division today. Now, these were the questions, you know, that were asked. But before the opening, uh, you know, Thurman was just like, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to the fight. Garcia was like, I'm excited and I can't wait to be victorious that night. Now, I took review of it. And the to me, and, you know, of course, Dante Boxing Nation was on it, you know, of course, and and others. But to me, Dan Raphael had the best, you know, questions. And, you know, he he he, he brought the best answers out of both out of both fighters. So basically, you know, uh, Dan Raphael asked him that after after the KO. uh After he fought Calazzo and after he fought uh, Porter, he had nine months off. And, uh, you know, having his fight at a higher platform now, you know, and, you know, his career. Like, you know, what is his view on, uh, you know, on his exposure as to being great? And, you know, just, uh, you know, Thurman's answer was like, you know, if, if, I, if I have to, you know... If, I want I wanted I wanted the fight he says and I I want the f he says I'm comfortable and I'm living the dream you know I want this fight and I want to start fighting two times a year you know he then the second question was uh, are you willing to uh you know you, uh, were you willing to wait for Danny to get a tune up fight and Thurman was like yes I can you know, um, he goes if I if I could, you know, I, I could I, I could live off of one paycheck, you know, now. But um, you know, I had rehab and I had a twenty year anniversary within the sport of boxing, and I had to sit back and look at what I accomplished because I hadn't had a chance to do that, and I needed to focus for twenty seventeen. And he also said I needed to learn to appreciate what uh you know appreciate what I had, you know, and um. Danny took his tune up and he wanted he wanted I think it yeah he wanted he wanted another tune up but they you know they just wanted a, a good tune up for before the big fight. Now when he said that that they said they wanted a good tune up for the next fight, I don't think that uh if I'm not mistaken Vargas was the kid that Garcia, you know, was fighting. I don't think that uh I don't think that was a good tune up. And then uh, you know, he also then he asked him, uh, you know, how does uh, that was Thurman, and then he, uh, he asked him, how how does it uh, make you feel that you're going to unify the same titles that Hearns and Leonard had? And um, well, Thurman's answer was amazing, a dream. Uh, I want to make a name and a legacy for myself and make boxing history, and that's what it's all about. Danny Garcia said, at the end of the day, I was cut from that cloth. Hagler Duran. I'm a throwback fighter. Then Dan Raphael proceeded to ask him, how do you feel about being the underdog? Danny said, at the end of the day, I let the critics be the critics. I'm a great champion. Now, there was more. Okay, you guys can check it out. Uh, yes News um, for more content. You know what I mean? It was it was a pretty good, good sit down, you know. If you guys, you know, whatever you guys do, to just relax. If you just want to listen to that, listen to that. It's a pretty good phone conference. Otherwise than that, thank you for joining my fight page, fight fans. My name is Jake Otto. Thank you for joining the Late Night Boxing Talk. God bless the vigilant. Hashtag come back to boxing. Hashtag the red gloves. Peace.
Late Night Boxing Talk has been brought to you by Shannon the Cannon Briggs, Bitch Ass Repellent. Keep the bitch assness away from your perimeter. Keep your rep tight and feel like a champion. Because in reality, no one likes a bitch ass around them. Shannon the Cannon Briggs, Bitch Ass Repellent. Get yours now. And Central Intelligence 16, starring Kevin Hart and Anthony Joshua. Bigger guns, bigger action. Everything is just big, except Kevin Hart. Coming 2028. Late Night Boxing Talk has also been brought to you by Weight Watchers presents Adrian Broner's Weight Phantom. Can't make that weight? Got a deadline? Weight Phantom is your answer. Made with cocaine, lean, and one third of Vicodin, Weight Phantom will mask that expectation. Weight Watchers presents Adrian Broner's Weight Phantom. Get it now. Eliminated. All you young boys that 